Okay, the boss gets his chance. <laughs> Andrew Schwartz, Senior Vice President, CSIS. Um, Mrs. Gates, when Nina and I dreamed up this series, um, this is what we envisioned. Thank you for being here. You are the gold standard, the platinum standard. Thank you for being here. My, my question is a simple one. I, you know, I read your piece on Medium last week about Sabita, who you mentioned before. I often find that in the United States, there's not enough coverage in the media of all the issues we're talking about. What can we and what can the foundation do better to publicize these stories to build more momentum for more things to actually happen? Yeah, thanks for that question. That's, it's hugely important. I would also just add to that, I mean, I think a lot of Americans um, think that foreign aid is a black hole, as you know, and you know, how do you get the message across that there have been gains? Yeah, so, um, so if you poll most Americans, they think that we spend 10% of the US budget on foreign aid, 10%, right. and we spend actually less than 1%, and those dollars are really well spent. So we're trying to get the message out that those investments are making a difference. Why can we even talk about polio almost being eradicated? investments. Why can we talk about vaccines being such a good, uh, making so much progress for childhood deaths? It's those investments. But we need the public, your point is exactly right, we need the public on board understanding that that makes a difference, both humanitarian-wise, they need to understand that these economies, you know, in Africa, a lot of the countries, they have the goal, right, of growing from a low-income economy to a middle-income. South Korea has done that transition. And if we get them on the right path, aid isn't forever. So economically, it makes sense. And selfishly, for our own peace and security, we want people to stay where they are. They want to stay where they are. So if they have the means and the livelihood and the health, they will. So one of the things we're just embarked on with our many partners, including the Global Poverty Project, but all of the NGOs in the sector, Save the Children, CARE, Oxfam, World Vision, is an initiative called Global Citizen. To, and you'll hear us speak about this more and more and more throughout the, the year, it's to try and get many people, and particularly young people and people who care about it, like in this room, connected to global uh, development and global health in these issues to understand the progress that's actually being made, have a website they can go to to learn about more and get updates, but then to go and be activists, to say to our government, we care about this, we care about your investments in vaccines, we care about people not going hungry, we need that public will. So any innovative ideas you all have about how to get stories out, not the destitute stories. I mean, that's for me is what's so hard is I read, you know, on the front of, you know, a newspaper, let's say, um, you know, I read the New York Times, which they do amazing coverage, but it's always the destitute story. Yeah. When I go to Africa, what I see is the amazing ingenuity and the change that's mm -hmm. going on. And so somehow we need to get those pieces of the story out too, and it's those changes that are happening in part because of some of the investments, the infrastructure investments we're helping make as a world into their infrastructure of global health and roads, et cetera. And that's what will set them on their way to lift themselves up, which is their ultimate goal. Mm 